Assalamu alaikum. Dear, Dear Imam Omar, I, I hope, hope this finds you well. Life isn't all that exciting for me. I go to work, go shopping, go home. And aside from babysitting Fatima occasionally, don't really have much of a social life. Kareem from the masjid always asks me to come volunteer for stuff. And I usually back out. But this time I decided I'd spend the weekend with him and the rest of the guys on a camping trip. Or at least that's what I thought I'd be doing. I'm not the most responsible guy in the world. I flake on many of my obligations and tend to be last minute about everything. I prayed occasionally, but at times got halfway through my wudu before deciding something else was more important than the prayer. So I decided I'd hurry and catch the guys before they left. But Allah had a different plan. And that plan included me being unable to open a door I'd opened a million times before. So I figured I'd call Karim and let him know this time I wasn't flaking on anything, but was just stuck in the bathroom. Makes perfect sense, right? And you say we have the best coverage in America. We often think we've got it all figured out. And that our contingency plans are too many for us to really get stuck in anything. Someone or something is always going to be there to bail you out. It's only a matter of time. But what happens when all that is taken away from you? And both the people and possessions you thought you could rely on start to fail you. At some point, you just want anybody to hear you. And the movements in the hallway create this sense of hope that someone's gonna come get you. You can hear them, and you know they can hear you. But then the sounds of the footsteps fade away, and you're left dejected, wondering if another person might pass by and hear your cries. But as you wait, you might as well entertain yourself as best as you can. It's pretty pathetic, I know, but sometimes imaginary friends are easier to deal with and can actually really keep you company. And they get boring too. And just like with any day of work, you come home, you go through your motions, and lights out. That wasn't exactly what I had in mind. And before I knew it, my bathroom started to seem more like a grave. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that we should frequently remember death and called it the destroyer of all pleasures. And though this might have been an odd place to do so, I probably thought of it more in those few moments than I had over the last year. It's amazing that it took getting stuck in a bathroom to start thinking about what it would be like to be alone in the grave. But I guess that's the point. Expect the unpredictable at any time. And death is the ultimate unpredictable. It was dark, cold, and lonely. And suddenly every little sound was as loud as a jackhammer.
But then I woke up to a nightmare that the fire that followed the grave was now to consume me, and that I could only hold off my inevitable fate for so long, because no one was going to hear or see me suffocate or burn. But Allah chose to spare me. The smoke alarm was in another unit, but the alarm I needed to hear was internal. So I did what I hadn't done for a long time and thought I had no time for it. No, it wasn't the best of places to start, but I had no choice, and surely my Lord is understanding and forgiving. Alhamdulillah. Suddenly there was clarity and an overwhelming sense that everything was going to be okay. Not because any person would hear me, but the only one who needed to hear me just did. The sounds started to come back, but this time they sounded real. And ironically, it turned out to be the one guy I'd actually done something nice for this year. John told me to look down and try turning the lever in the opposite direction. I really didn't get what he said until I actually tried it. And just like that, the turner of hearts turned my heart towards him. And as my Lord promised, everything was okay. Everything was okay. And though I thought I was alone throughout this entire ordeal, Allah was with me the entire time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ That when you're conscious of Allah, Allah will make a way out for you. But the thing is that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to delay that way out so that He can give you some perspective. Because you see, if, if Ziyadah would have went on that trip, he would have had a weekend of fun. But now he has a lifetime of perspective. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said that when Allah sends these tests to us, He called them a'rad, which are hindrances. So Allah will take a little bit of your, your health so that you can recognize the blessing of your health. He'll take a little bit of your wealth so that you can recognize the blessing of your wealth. He'll take a little bit of your, your, your time so that you can recognize the blessing of your time. So all of these things are to put things back in perspective so that we don't become ungrateful, so that we don't lose you know, sight of the purpose in life, so that we keep our focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu said. He said that, Ala kullu shay'in khala Allah baathilu that the most truthful line of poetry ever spoken was that everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disposable. Because if you lose anything else in life, then you can replenish it with something, you can replace it with something. But if you lose Allah, you lose everything, including yourself. <laughs>